want to enlarge the tent, but people who are in the tent, we want to be happy campers. for young people aged 13 to 18 to be involved in the next youth series that we're producing from Christianity Explored. Existe tremendo ganho em servir ao Senhor. Well, good evening and a very, very warm welcome to Love Live Tell 2023. Um, it is fantastic to see so many of you here. Um, thank you to those of you who braved what is a pretty chilly February evening to join us here in All Souls, to those who have joined us on the live stream. And I know we have people from all around the world, so thank you for being with us, particularly if this is a time when you would normally be in bed. <laughs> so we have two purposes this evening, and the first and the most important is to thank God for his kindness to us as a ministry over the past year. Um, we have so many encouraging things to tell you um, about what has been going on, and we're looking forward to sharing that with you. But the glory really does go to God, and we are so grateful to him for all that he's enabled us to do. And the second purpose of this evening is to say thank you to you, because without you, Christianity Explored would not exist. Thank you for running courses um, I was chatting with somebody just five minutes ago who said, oh, I've been running courses. Several people came to faith um, on our course recently, and they're being baptized this month. And it's stories like that that keep us going. Thank you for running courses. Thank you for praying. Prayer is so vital. And thank you for giving. Without giving, nothing gets done. So thank you. And I have a special personal thank you to give um, to particularly uh, you guys here. And that is a thank you to all those who participated in our survey. Uh, if you were here last year, you will remember that we launched a survey so that we could talk to you about what evangelistic resources you need um, as we come to create a brand new Christianity Explored. Um, Thank you for all those who, part who responded and participated. Um, literally hundreds of you, literally hundreds. Um, our product development manager, Juby De Silva, and I read every single comment, so thank you for that. Um, we have returned to that data over and over as we ask ourselves what is needed of a new Christianity explored. Um, so there's going to be a lot more about that later. Um, we've also got a new youth resource to tell you about and some exciting staff news to talk to, talk to you about. Um, and that is just in the UK team. The international team have had an amazing year. They have seen God move in prison ministry. They have seen God move through leading co uh, le uh, training course leaders across the world. And they've seen God move excitingly in new online projects. So we are really looking forward to hearing all about that and to sharing that with you. But let's start as we mean to go on. Um, I'm going to ask you all to stand and I'm going to pray and then we're going to sing uh, praises to our God. Let's pray. Paul says to the church in Corinth, you show that you are a letter from Christ, the result of our ministry written not with ink, 
but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Such confidence we have through Christ before God. Not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. And Lord Jesus, we tremble as we recognize ourselves in this passage. Lord, we know that you have chosen us to be a letter from you to our generation. And that we know so clearly that we are not competent in ourselves. But Lord, we can say with Paul, such confidence we have through Christ before God. And we are so grateful for that. So we pray that you would bless us this evening and in all the work throughout the year. Um, and particularly for all the users across the world um, who take Pick Up Christianity Explored um, to share the salvation news um, that you came to give us. Amen. If we remain standing, we'll sing our first song, Yet Not I, But Through Christ in Me.
Thank you so much. Please do take a seat. Um, just so that you know, if you want to follow along, there are programs on their table, so you can see what we'll, we'll be up to. Um, so those of you who were here last year will remember that um, Dave Corns, our youth evangelist, uh, was here to tell us of some exciting upcoming plans that he had that were forming in his mind. Um, and the last thing I said to him was, Dave, will you come back next year and tell us how it's all going on? Well, thankfully, he is back next year. Dave, come on up and tell us about the youth resource. Thanks so much, Katie. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> My name's Dave. I'm the Associate Youth Evangelist with Christianity Explored. And it's a joy tonight to tell you about the new youth resource that is going to be released later on this year. Um, let me tell you a little bit about the vision. The vision has two parts to it for this new resource. Firstly, we want to reach a generation of young people with the good news of Jesus. 13 to 19s are known today as the open generation. They're the ones for whom the gospel is, is really available to and for those whom they're really open to the gospel. They're open to talking about questions of life and faith and meaning and purpose. And, and secondly, the vision for this new youth resource is to equip young Christians to be bold and fearless and passionate evangelists. Which is why, as part of this new series, we've created some training resources to equip them. But let me tell you more about the series that we're creating. And uh, in a few minutes' time, we're going to watch uh, a little sneaky peek of some of the content that we filmed just last week. We, we've called the series Vox. And that's because we want to hear young people's voices as they engage with the scriptures, as they engage with God's voice to them. And so we've got four episodes as we go through the series, journeying through the Gospel of Luke. Now, Luke is brilliant at looking at who Jesus is, why he's come, and the impacts that he has on our lives. And Luke is brilliant about relationships. So as you go through, you get to see people's interactions with Jesus. Those who follow him for mixed motives, those who accept the message with joy, those who re reject him with animosity. And our prayer is that as we go through the Gospel of Luke, we'll get to see young people resonating with those interactions with Jesus. And so in episode one, we're introduced to the Gospel of Luke, where Luke tells us why he's written his book, to give us a careful account of all that he's written, so that we'd know for sure that Jesus is who he says he is. We see his birth story. In episode two, we see more about his kingdom, the kind of life and, and purpose that Jesus has come to bring and him hinting to him going to the cross and being raised from the dead. In episode three, we look at the beautiful, beautiful parable of the lost son who wanders away from the father through selfishness, wanting to find his life and identity elsewhere, and yet who comes home and is welcomed by a father with open arms. And in episode four, we see the climax of all that's been taught, seen in the Lord Jesus, in his death and in his resurrection. And our prayer is that as young people go through this journey, just simply reading the Gospel of Luke and letting the Gospel speak for itself, they will be impacted and changed and go from death to life, from bright blindness to sight. That is our prayer. The way we're doing it is a little bit different. So the series is going to have kind of reality TV vibes. Any, any reality TV fans here tonight? <laughs> I, know, I know some of you are Love Island fans. Uh, it's nothing like that. The idea is that we're taking six young people away to a, rem a remote location um, to, to enable them to get back to the basics of life in the Christian faith. So we get to see them fending for themselves away from home, trying to cook meals and put up tents and things. And we get to listen in on their conversations as they watch the teaching. There's kind of layers to it. So there's the teaching, there's the young people on screen watching, and there's the young people in the room watching the young people on screen watching the, the teaching. It makes beautiful sense when you watch it. And so these six young people, we actually have just come back from filming just two weeks 
um, ago, we started the studio work and the London filming, and last weekend, we took those six young people to the Black Mountains and, uh, and, and, and shot them watching the teaching and engaging with it. And uh, we've actually got, fresh from the press, a few clips to show you from there. Um, so take a look at the screens. Well, will you join me in welcoming uh, two of the young people who were there on the series to the stage, Jesse and Maranatha. Come on up. Jesse and Maranatha were there for, for the last five days. And um, how are you feeling? Are you feeling a bit tired still? Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> um, do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Tell us who you are. I'm Maranatha. I'm 18. I'm... I'm taking a gap year currently, um, and I'm just working in a, I'm working in retail right now. Real. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Jesse. I'm also 18, and yeah, living in London as a freelancer, which has its its perks and its, you know, cons. But it's great. <laughs> so the other four young people are far away in Northern Ireland and up north and various other locations in the UK. But you two were the closest, which is why you've got them tonight. And um, tell us, what was your favourite moment from the shoot? Um, probably when we went up hiking and were trying to put the tents all together and it was just... In the 52 mile an hour wind. Yeah, that, was def <laughs> that definitely was like the cherry on top, I think. For me. How about you, Jesse? Let me tell you, that was a low point for me. It was cold, <laughs> it was wet, it was windy, it was not what I wanted. But um, I think one of my high points was... We, with, with the teaching, we watch the teaching and then we have conversation and we film the conversation. But the conversation was the most beautiful thing you'll listen to. And you will listen to it soon. And it's amazing. But there was this really uh, one moment where we started opening up as young people about like grief. Like 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds opening up about grief and just being really raw, really vulnerable. And it was just so powerful and relatable and mm. it excites me, and it was beautiful. You'll see it, I'm sure. Yeah, it's that's great. brilliant. There we go, you've got to watch it just for that. Now, um, you're, you're obviously young people in the youth world, you know the culture, you know the people, etc. cetera. Um, why do you think this resource is going to be so helpful for young people today? today? Um, just because like, it's obviously great teaching in it, and I think it just opens up a lot of like, questions that normally like, in everyday life like, you wouldn't be able to... Like, really think about, I don't know, we had some, we had some really good discussions in mm. there, it was really great, yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think we just say the gospel, and the gospel's good, like that's what's taught, and then out of that we have this really relatable, really raw conversation, and I just think that's, that's the easiest thing to, to watch as a teenager, so it's great. Brilliant, so if your church youth group was to run this series, would you invite a friend along? Yeah, definitely. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Um, it's God, yeah. Um, I don't know, yeah, like, I think me, like, when I was, like, when I was, like, young, we just didn't really have any kind of resource like this. Mm. I think it's, it's really so great, like, for them to be able to see like for themselves, someone like similar to themselves, also kind of like pondering those questions about God mm. that they might be struggling with. Because mm. I know I definitely had those kind of, like mm. it's something I went through as well, so, mm. yeah. Yeah, no, I think, is anyone counting how much I use the word relatable? 
because this is like, you are great, wonderful. <laughs> but seriously, it's like, as a young person, I wish that there was a resource, well, like this, so I could just, it is just relatable. It's the only word I've got for it because it's watchable, it's easy, and it's good. And I think that's all it takes. And it, mm. I don't know, I, w I remember, I think if I was like 14 and I watched it, I'd just feel so equipped and like ready to even go out into my school where, you know, school can be a dark place. And I can, I, I know the gospel better. I can teach it. I can spread that light, you know. But yeah, there you go. Brilliant. Oh, thank you both so much. Let's give them a round of applause. Well done. Good to see. We're really excited for this resource. I hope you are too. I hope we've given you a taste of the vision for this new youth resource. Um, and I hope you'll commit to pray. That you'll pray and pray and pray that God would use this resource to bring a generation to saving faith in the Lord Jesus. Okay. Thanks so much, guys. Um, it was just I was out in Wales with uh, with the team, and uh, it was brilliant. I don't know, I don't know, Jesse, if you if you think this is true, but I just felt it was so relatable what they were doing. So, <laughs> yeah. No, we're excited. Um, so, okay, what do we need to know, Dave? When will it be available? So we're planning to release it this September, 2023. I know. Wow. Exciting, that is the correct exciting. response. And where do we find it? You'll be able to find it on the brand new, is that, am I allowed to say that? You are allowed to say that, yeah. On the brand new Christianity Explored website, which will be coming soon. Coming soon. Yeah, to be able to download to and share. To be able to download and, and The most important question that all of the youth uh, workers, they don't care about that. Uh -huh. They want to know how much does it cost? Well, this is incredible, okay? It's free. Yeah. Thanks to you guys. Thanks to you guys. Yeah. No, we want to get this resource out into young people's hands so they can use it one-to-one -one with their friends in Christian unions. We can't charge young people, so That is fantastic. Free. Well, thank you so much for all you're doing. We really, Thanks, really appreciate it. Um, as I say, I was in Wales with the team um, when, when they were shooting, and uh, we, were, we were there. It was January, it was Wales. We were there for five days, um, and it barely rained. And if that is not a testimony to the power of prayer, I don't know what is. Um, sometimes God's provision comes in unexpected ways. And earlier this year, um, we had some unexpected provision from the Lord when we had a chat with our founder, Rico Tice, and he explained that he wanted to make some life changes and that he would be available to work with us full time which is incredibly exciting news. So I just thought, let's, let's get Rico up and let's um, get him to come and tell us um, how that happened. <laughs> so we have to be a bit careful about being too excited in All Souls. Um, obviously, it's a bit of a touch <laughs> subject. So Rico, how long have you been at All Souls? Uh, 29 years. So I got ordained uh, in July uh, 1994. So, a long time. So, what, yeah, a long time. <laughs> um, what are the factors that have brought you to this kind of new life stage? Um, well, actually, as you'll see from Christianity Explored, the opportunities are amazing and they're growing. So, wanting to make the most of those, but also the, the, the job at All Souls also grows. Um, there, there's just a huge amount to do in terms of evangelism here. And, and you've really got to be a constant presence to try and keep the evangelism going. And then a family of, because I didn't get through puberty till 38, I had kids at 42, and so, so just my, my kids are 7, 10, and 12, and, and just trying to balance those three things um, has become uh, untenable, really. So that's well, it's there. great news for us. Um, yeah. And so what are you looking forward to about working full-time with Christianity Explored? I, I think most of, all, most of all, actually, the relationships. Um, that so often with the Christianity Explored family, there hasn't been the time to get to know people because... One's been at All Souls, and, and this has been so much of the laboratory for developing product and that sort of stuff, but it has meant that you just haven't had the time. So it's going to be great to get to know people better and then just, just work for the gospel. Just um, be very clear in terms of, you know, getting Mark's gospel out, getting the youth resource out, doing what one can. There's a, there's a real clarity of vision I think we have and, um, and seeking those open doors. Well, thank yeah. you. We are delighted to have you with us. Um, as a treat, because Rico has agreed to work with us full time, uh, we've allowed him to talk about Mark's gospel. Um, so <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Rico. Just for um, five minutes. The passage that uh, Rico was talking about is in the programmes, if you want to follow. So if you can uh, open up the programmes there, 
just to say, if any of you do watch Love Island, see me afterwards, that would be helpful. We'd like to have a chat with you about that. But, um, but I, I think, honestly, of, in, of the last 29 years I've had, I think today, in terms of being an Anglican, has, brothers and sisters, been the worst day. Um, I'm full of grief um, that the, uh, the, the Church of England General Synod in all three houses, although it was very narrow in, in, in one of them, have endorsed um, blessings on relationships, sexual relationships outside of marriage. It is a, a cataclysmic disaster. Um, and so do please pray as the Church of England and the Christians in it respond. But, you know, what has happened really is that the, the, the shepherds have opened up the sheep gate, for the, 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 the gate for the wolves to come in. Um, so we're, we're, we're desperately sad. Do pray for us, particularly those who... Um, have permissions to officiate and those sort of things. Now, when these things happen and you do feel very low and full of grief, um, it is always great to think of the Lord Jesus because it was worse for him. And, uh, 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 you know, as, I, as we, we, we think of, of Jesus and his ministry in chapter 3, it looks as though there is no chance the cause of Christ can flourish, that he can win. At every point, the, the odds are stacked against him. And, of course, there is that key verse in Mark, chapter 3, verse 6, then the Pharisees went out and began to plot with the Herodians, the ruling authorities, uh, how they might kill Jesus. So uh, uh, the authorities want him dead. His disciples seem a hopeless bunch, containing as they do a tax collector, a zealot, and chapter 3, verse 19, Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. And you think at that point, well, surely his family will be with him. Surely they'll support him. Verse 21, when his family heard about this, they came to take charge of him, for they said he's out of his mind. And in the face, and we have this today in the Church of England, in the face of massive opposition and misunderstanding, brothers and sisters, what do we do? The situation seems hopeless, and what is Jesus' response? Can you look down and see verse 33, the last uh, verse that we have before us? What is the response, the appropriate response of Jesus to opposition and misunderstanding? Do you see it there? With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them, as much as they could understand. So Jesus' response to all opposition is to teach, teach, teach the word. That is the key to winning. And here, uh, first of all, there's the contrast between tiny beginnings and great conclusions as the word is taught. So the question is, why aren't God's enemies being overthrown? Why isn't the, the Messiah sorting everything out? He is, after all, the Messiah. Why doesn't the world lie at Christ's feet? And Jesus responds, do you see verse 30? What should we say the kingdom of God is like? What parable should we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed uh, which is planted in, in, in the ground, yet when it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches, the birds of the air can perch in its shade. So a mustard seed is the, the size of the end of a sort of ballpoint pen. Uh, it's so small that if you look at it in a patch of soil, you can't see it's there. But those tiny seeds grow into great plants that are 12 foot high. Uh, 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 you know, just, just massive. And the mustard seed uh, grows so large that the birds which could have swallowed it would later find shade in its branches. And Jesus says that is what God's rule is like in the world. So Steve James up there, 1997, there he is in prison. And we'll see later that 600,000 prisoners have heard the gospel through his ministry with Prison Fellowship. And he, 1997, this, this guy of six foot four on drug offences is in prison being taught the Bible, and 25 years later, 600,000 prisoners have heard through him. It is a tiny, tiny start, but a great, great conclusion. And what we have to do is hold our nerve and teach, teach, teach the word. Thank goodness, 1997, they got the Bible open in prison with Steve. But could they have imagined the sea of prisoners that would hear the gospel through his ministry. They're just beyond, beyond, you can't even compare, 600,000? And of course, it's not just on that personal level, it's on history, it's about being the right side of history. As the, verse, as the word is taught, Revelation 7 verse 19, this is where history is heading. And after this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people and language, standing before the throne in front of the Lamb. A very great start, but a very great end. We are on the right side of history. Today in the Church of England, you don't feel as though you're on the right side of history as the bishops capitulate to the culture but they are wrong, and the word of God is right. 
And please see the continuity here, brothers and sisters. That's the key. You see that the end is only reached from the beginning. You can't get a plant except by planting a mustard seed. There's no other start to get that end. So the word, for the seed, verse 31, it, that's what produces the kingdom in people's lives. So what I have to do is I have to keep saying, I'm getting the word open, I'm teaching it one-to-one, -one. I'm teaching it in a small group, I'm teaching it from the front, I'm reading it at home for myself. It's the word that does the work. And what we have to do is hold our nerve and keep teaching the word. And just as I close, as you look down, I love verse 28. Do you see verse 28? All by itself, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel of the head. All by itself is the word automatic. Automatic. So the word, that's what grows. Our job is just to sow it. But the word has a power to germinate and bear forth fruit. But our job is to keep doing that. So let's hold our nerve and keep doing it. And that's how we respond to misunderstanding and opposition. Uh, just Michael Andrews. Are you here, Michael? Just do jump up. Michael, just, we're going to have an opportunity to teach the word. Just tell us for a moment what, what, what that opportunity is, because we'd love people to take advantage of it. Yeah, so we booked the Royal Albert Hall on May the 6th for our usual prom praise event. And then we found out it's the day of the king's coronation. So we decided to rebrand as the coronation prom. And so the seed that we're sowing that day is Philippians chapter 2. Christ humbled himself. He was obedient to death, even death on a cross. So there's that wonderful moment in the coronation where the orb comes out, which represents the world. And it's Christ's cross that stands above it all. So we've got a great speaker booked. We've got Rico Tice joining us. We're going to get the orb sent from the Jewel House to the Royal Albert Hall. <coughs> we'll have a massive symphony orchestra, special guests, the Kingdom Choir, Brian Dirksen and several other people. Um, so do join us in the Royal Albert Hall that evening if you'd like to find out more. We're also going to be sharing, hopefully, about Christianity Explored uh, that evening. And we're also giving away the concert as a free resource to people wherever you are in the world to use, whether it's in your local churches up and down the country um, or in your homes with family and friends. So please pray for us. We'd love your prayers. Thank you. Great. So great chance to do that. 6th of May, start Christianity Explored on the 8th or the following Monday or whatever it is in the week. But use that opportunity to play it at home and then we'll go from there. Great, okay. Thank you, Rico. Um, teach, teach, teach the word. It is at the center of everything that we aim to do. And we know from our um, survey and from our research that it is of first importance to you guys as well. So the question that we ask ourselves um, as we come to create a completely new uh, version of Christianity Explored is how do we best steward the timeless message about the identity of Christ, the mission of Christ, and his call upon our lives? And you know our heart. Um, it is to be absolutely clear about the gospel, and it is to be as scripturally faithful as we can possibly be. But we also want our resources to be beautiful and engaging. And we want to harness the very best in film techniques as we seek to do that. When we, when we were here last year, um, I said that I wanted you guys who already use Christianity Explored to be thrilled with what we produce and to see our commitment to scripture shining through. And that we also want to, to come before new audiences, um, particularly younger audiences. And we know that younger audiences are, have very high expectations of what they see on a screen. So over the past few months, we have been working with a creative a filmmaker called Tom Cousins, um, and we've started the conversation about what does the next Christianity Explored look like. Um, and we've been encouraged by Tom's commitment to our values of clarity about the gospel and faithfulness to scripture. And we are thrilled that he is bringing his visual creativity to the project. So, Tom, why don't you come on up? Um, let's meet Tom. Hi there. Good evening. So, thank you for joining us this evening. Um, so, to start off with, tell us about you and how you got into filmmaking. Thank you, Kay. I will tell you about me, but first I have a question for you. How do you know if a filmmaker is at a party? 
I don't know. How do you know if a filmmaker is... Don't worry, he'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke about how filmmakers are all self-obsessed narcissists. And with that, I'd like to tell you about my story. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, became a Christian quite young. I was 12 years old. I was a filmmaker. I made films when I was in my teens. I was an electronic music composer. And then I was a missionary. Uh, at the age of 18, I went out to Liberia, post its 14-year civil war with mercy ships. Um, it wasn't a civil war with mercy ships. I was with mercy ships, just to be clear. Um, that was a really pivotal moment in my faith. Thought I was going to stay out there for the rest of my life and ended up uh, studying engineering at Cambridge um, for some reason. Did my master's there. And then after that, I was asked to pastor at a church. Um, if you know it, Holy Trinity Cambridge, wonderful church. I was there for two years working with students and youth. Um, and at the end of that process, I was asking the question, Lord, vicardom or um, evangelism in the marketplace? And God swiftly pushed me towards evangelistic ministry, but uh, wanted me to study. So I studied theology for one year before then going to work at the BBC and some other production companies for about one and a half years. Um, and during that time, loved it. They make amazing stuff, but felt like I couldn't ask the questions I really wanted to ask. I wanted to talk about God and think about questions of absolute truth, and that was a problem there. And so I was praying with a group of friends, and we came up with this idea, Owl in Space, uh, which somehow, miraculously, w became a combination of all my disparate skills that I'd built up. Um, you can probably tell my part, Daisy, if we have it. Perhaps the question is not whether we can transcend all of our human limits, but what limits we should put on technology so that we use it to enhance our humanity rather than escape it. Maybe miracles only look that way because they're so much bad in the first place. This is not how I imagined eternity to be. Thank you. So you've obviously done all sorts of different kinds of work through your company, Owl in Space. Tell us a bit more about that and why you set it up. Sure. Um, so um, the name Owl in Space has a fun philosophy. Ask me about it at the end. Um, but it's basically about man's search for God. Um, and uh, just so you know that I'm a safe pair of hands, um, right at the beginning of our journey, um, uh, after leaving the BBC, I looked for funding and raised... Uh, approximately £200,000 plus from John Templeton Foundation, and they funded a series of films. Um, and since then, we've had a number of donors and commercial partners that have helped us make evangelistic films that explore God questions through the lens of uh, contemporary topics, particularly topics that are pertinent for young people. I think um, I would use the word relatable um, <laughs> to young people. <clears throat> um, we, those films have won a number of awards, including the... Um, uh, the Drama Award at The Pitch, um, and uh, you can check them out on our website. There's a number of film festivals we've uh, been part of, and you can see the work that we've done. It's all on there, alnispace.com. We've worked with a number of brands, um, so we've worked with the BBC. Uh, we've worked with Cambridge, Oxford, uh, Hong Kong University. We've worked with a number of finance companies. We've worked with NICC, uh, a number of brands, and we bring that high production value from the commercial space uh, to Christian organizations as well. So um, have worked with a number of Christian organizations to uh, produce the next generation of evangelistic resources. We want to make stuff that's really going to change people's lives and show the gospel, particularly to this younger, lost generation that um, was Dave was talking about. Wonderful. Brilliant, um, thank you. Um, it has been fantastic to have you along us. We've been thinking about how we put into practice all the feedback we've had about Christianity Explored. Um, as we've had those discussions, what has struck you particularly? Good question. Um, I think uh, reaching the younger generation, so making relatable 
content, um, uh, no, acknowledging that the gospel does not change, but the questions that we ask do. Um, and I think it's really significant that there are, there's a load of studies into generational questions. We've been looking at how our grandparents may have asked the question, what's true? Our parents might have asked, what's good? My generation, millennials, asked, what is useful? And the younger generation are asking questions around beauty as well. There's also a whole other set of questions culturally that we have to engage with. Um, for example, I think the last generation we were looking at... Um, you know, is the Bible irrelevant um, or boring? But now young people are often asking the question, is it actually bad? And this is a difficult question that we need to grapple with and engage with. So that's one of the things that I love about C is not afraid to look into the face of these difficult questions and present the gospel to them. Uh, the second is, um, I think it's really unique that um, CE um, lets the Bible tell the story. I think opening the Bible is a unique proposition today and I think it's part of the DNA which makes it so powerful um, I think it's something that transcends class race generation right it's opening the Bible and saying what do you think this is what it says what do you think and I think that's an incredible proposition it's why it's done so well in so many different spaces super exciting um, and the final part and you'll see this in, in the, the, the way the youth resource was made um, this concern with the power of testimony this, the concern with the power of people's stories as they experience God's power and transformation in their lives. I love that. That's you. Thank you. So what excites you about the project going forward? Yeah, so I, I love to see people's lives transformed by the gospel. And I think um, this project is interesting because it takes film, which is a familiar format, especially with the younger generation. The evidence suggests that YouTube is the primary place where under-18s are making their decisions about life, the universe, and everything. Isn't that bonkers? That's bonkers. YouTube. It's a familiar format that they're familiar with, but it's also asking them to commune, taking them away from that digital space, taking people away from that digital space, and to commune together. And that's really exciting to me. Um, and the second thing is that I, I'm really excited about how it's not just about exploring the Christian faith for the first time. There's also a real... Um, desire to, to see young people, people in general, discipled. I think that's really important, like commit, allowing people to become and find committed Christian faith. That's exciting to me. And the last is that I just think film is an amazing format. Um, I think it allows us to explore an idea through different ways of knowing. And I think just like the Gospel of Mark, um, it doesn't just tell people the truth. It doesn't just have the capacity to tell the truth. It also has the capacity to allow people to see a lived out faith in a story or a transformed life. Um, I think those films allow us to accomplish getting the gospel into the hands of people. Thank you so much. We are delighted to have you with us. Let's uh, thank Tom. Thank you. Uh, so we've got a lot going on on the UK team. Um, I am going to ask Andrew Gordon, who is one of our trustees, if he will come and commit these projects uh, to the Lord in prayer for us. Thank you, Andrew. I promise. Good evening. It's working. Lovely. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this is so exciting. Uh, the gospel going forward to young people, to people uh, of all generations. Father, we thank you for the great work that you have done uh, in using Christianity Explored Ministries. Uh, Father, your hand has certainly been upon that, in people hearing the gospel and responding to it. Father, we take nothing for granted. We lay uh, these ideas before you, we bring people before you also. Uh, we want to thank you for Dave, Lord, and uh, the team in uh, Youth Explored. Uh, we pray for them, Lord, as they go through the po post-production. Uh, we pray, Lord, that they would uh, bring forward a product, Lord, that would allow young people to hear the voice of Jesus and respond to it. Father, use that to open the minds, hearts, ears of young people and thank you father for the uh, young people who did participate who took part father uh, we thank you for their boldness and their honesty and their warmth 
We pray protection upon them uh, in the weeks ahead. Uh, we pray against any discouragement for them. And Father, we want to thank you for the great vision, Lord, for Christianity Explored. Thank you for our brother, Lord, sharing his heart. Thank you for the vision that you've given him. Again, Father, we pray for the production of that, that uh, it would be innovative, but it would also be faithful. Uh, that is our brother's desire. That's the team's desire out in space. Please use them, we pray. Uh, give them that creativity that they need, but again, give them that boldness in the gospel. And then, Father, we do thank you for our brother, uh, Rico Tice. We thank you for his love for you, his love for the lost, his love for your people. Uh, we uh, ask your help for him, Lord, as he uh, goes from his ministry here uh, at All Souls to working directly for Christianity Explored Ministries. Uh, this is a season of change for him. Help him, Lord, we pray. Uh, and uh, give him, Father, um, a clarity of mind, clarity of thought, Lord, with regards to uh, the script and, uh, and production of Christianity Explored. Again, Father, this is, this is all down to you, and our brother would acknowledge that. Please use him and use the team, uh, executive staff, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks so much, Angie. So while the UK team have been focusing on creating new resources, the international team have been hard at work equipping course leaders around the world. Christianity Explored is now in more than 140 countries and has been translated into more than 60 languages, so they have their work cut out. Um, I'm going to invite the international team to come on up and uh, we're going to hear a little bit more about what they've been doing. Thanks so much, guys. Um, so I'm going to start with Ian, uh, because he is my boss. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ian, you've been telling me that about three core areas of work. Um, do you want to give us a quick summary of what you want to talk about? Uh, yes. Um, great to be here. Great to see so many of you, seen so many familiar faces. Just say that first. But uh, that really is wonderful to, uh, to, to see you all again. Um, the first area is prisons. So we've talked quite a lot about prisons in the past, and uh, Rico's already given a sneak preview as to how many uh, prisons have done it. So the, the prisons there, it's just staggering what's going on, and we'll talk a little bit more about, uh, about that later. The second area we probably haven't talked about quite so much, and that's the area of leadership training. And Tom mentioned just now about how our resources are straight out of the Bible. And so we've come across so many ministries all around the world, particularly in the majority worlds, who are teaching pastors to teach from the Bible. And so when they come across our material, it's just the sort of natural extension they resonate with it. So uh, we'll hear a little bit more about Brazil in the near future. I've got my Brazilian friend uh, at my left hand here, and uh, uh, Juby and Craig and I went, went to Brazil in October. Uh, but it's not just in Brazil, in Latin America, there's the whole Spanish-speaking part of Latin America. And there's a good friend of ours, Kep James, who may even be watching online today, but we met Kep for the first time in the States in November. He's a missionary from Parkside Church in, uh, in Cleveland, Ohio, and he went to Bolivia 20 years ago, and he's established a whole network of um, uh, training cells, I suppose, all across the, the Spanish-speaking part of, uh, of Latin America. He's now got summoned back to, to Cleveland in order to... Uh, try and do the same thing in, in Africa, along with some of Park Size missionaries, as well as some, some networks they've got there. So suddenly he's been putting Christianity Explored in alongside his, his training network in, in Latin America. The same thing is likely to happen in Africa, and Africa is the area where we've probably had our biggest work. We've talked about a little bit in the past in, in Uganda, so huge work that's been going for 15 years. So it's as though the, the world is sort of joining up. Um, Craig and I returned from Uganda just a week or so ago, so we'll talk a little bit about that. 
But it doesn't stop there. When you go north above the Sahara and then further east, there's uh, a lot of work we're involved in. I'm never quite sure how much we can say from the stage and on the internet, so we're not going to talk about that this evening. But it is really just staggering how we just seem to be mixing with so many different people who are trained in the Bible, and they're seeing our work um, both supplementing that and uh, providing an evangelistic edge to it. So that's the second huge area. The third one is smaller, but it's growing. Um, not surprisingly, because it's in the digital area, which is, is massive and obviously so important here as well. But we're connecting in particular here with people who are running online evangelism courses, and often with e-coaches, and um, so Christian Explored and Disciple Explored on, online, and uh, Katie's going to talk about that in a, a little while as well. So, sorry, that's quite a long preamble. No, but, that's uh, fine. There is that a... So you've been busy then? Um, <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I haven't seen too much of my wife recently, but, uh, <laughs> but she's here this evening, so uh, yeah. Um, why don't we start by talking about Brazil? Um, GB, you were in Sao Paulo recently, I gather, but it's not the first time you've been to Brazil. It's not the first time I've been to Brazil. I was born in Brazil, legitimate Brazilian person here in, on the stage. And uh, that's, that, I could tell you a bit about the, the, the history of Christianity in yes, Brazil. Yes, yes, thank you. Um, the history is very much what you can see in the story with, uh, of people with, Christ, uh, with Christianity. So this is a very Roman Catholic country historically, and it's interesting to see what happens during carnival time. Uh, people flock to the streets, they party during the weekend, Monday, Tuesday, and then it's Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, and they flock to the Roman Catholic Church to be forgiven for all the naughty things they've done uh, during the weekend. So that's uh, Roman Catholicism. Then the evangelical church has been growing so much in the last decades, and with it, false teaching, lots of false teaching in Brazil. So, uh, and that history is very much what you, what you can find in my own story. This is going to be confession on a very public level, okay? <laughs> my, I grew up in a Roman Catholic uh, home. We were taken to a Baptist church when I was 10. We heard the gospel, we met Jesus. Years later, this very man speaking to you was enticed by the prosperity gospel in Brazil. And to my shame, I worked closely with false teachers in Brazil. And I understand what it is to, to work under false teaching. You, I saw the abuse in, in church. And later on, by God's mercy, my eyes were opened uh, by God to scripture and I just left the country very disappointed with the church and I sought uh, theological training abroad and I prayed that the Lord would provide me with faithful leaders that he would surround me with these people and here I am <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very grateful to be uh, part of Christianity Explored Ministries it's an answer to prayer and I'm excited to uh, continue working, preaching the gospel beautifully and boldly. So, I think that's it. Thank you. <laughs> so, tell us what you were doing with the Christianity Explored team in Brazil. Yes, well, uh, this resulted from a Brazilian pastor finding Rico Tais online and loving the materials and getting desperate to, to get Hope Explored translated to Portuguese. But Brazil has, uh, Christianity Explored has been in Brazil for, for more than 10 years now. So, uh, working with uh, uh, Editora Cristã Evangelica. But this man worked in a big organization, training pastors to preach expository sermons in Brazil. We met, this organization trained 3,000 pastors spread out all over Brazil and they also run conferences. Every year they gather the pastors and we had the opportunity to launch Hope Explored in Portuguese. And in that conference, we also were invited to have our own Bible expositor, Craig Dyer. And I got to translate Craig 
and it was a lot of fun. We had some good laughs and some tears, and it was marvelous, really marvelous work we did uh, in Brazil. Yes, yeah, so I think we've got a clip of that. Have we got a clip of the uh, Bristol Conference? <laughs> okay. Paul is defining wolves in the way that Jesus did. Eu, eu imagino que Paulo está definindo os lobos da maneira que Jesus fez. Do you remember in Mark, Matthew chapter 7? Você lembra lá em Mateus capítulo 7? Verse 15. Verso 15. Jesus said, beware of false prophets, false preachers. Jesus diz, acautelai-vos, porém, dos falsos profetas, falsos who, pregadores. Who come to you in sheep's clothing. Que vêm até vós vestidos como ovelhas. But actually, <laughs> the ravenous wolves. Mas interiormente, rawr. So wolves and what are those? I think <laughs> you are a better, a better wolf than I am. Rawr. Acho que é o melhor, melhor wolf que eu. That's <laughs> So, Craig, um, when you are not impersonating sheep in Brazil, um, I gather that you spent some time in Uganda last year. Um, can you tell us about that? Yeah, that, that was a high point in my ministry, being a, being a, a stronger wolf than Juby. Um, <laughs> well, many of you here have heard me talking about our work in uh, Uganda, East Africa, for 15 years. I've been enthusing others about what God is doing there and the joy for us uh, in being involved in the ministry down there. Um, and we've seen teeming thousands of people in Uganda, Burundi, Rwanda, Kenya, South Sudan, go through Christianity Explored, uh, young people um, in discipleship, many people in the villages and towns and cities uh, in uh, key evangelism. But the thing that was different and the, and the difference I want to try and share with you tonight is what Ian alluded to earlier on, that the course has been taken and because it has been appreciated for its, for its biblical clarity and uh, for the sincerity of the efforts just to dig the truth out of the text, it has been embedded in pastor training. Uh, you, you will have, if you've been here before, you will have heard me talking about our dear brother Shadrach Lequago. Uh, Shadrach was the hospital pharmacist at Chiwoko, Bible, uh, uh, Chiwoko Hospital in uh, Luero District in central Uganda. He was a, a, a sincere believer in the Lord, part of his local church, a preacher who loved the word of God and felt he wanted some training. So he went to the Kampala Evangelical School of Theology, which All Souls had a, a great part in investing in at that time through Langham. And the remarkable thing was that he, he so benefited from the training there that he said, if I, when I come to the end of my course, even if I can share this with one other person, I will do so. So the Lord put that desire in his heart, almost like the 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2 thing. The things you've heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, tell, pass on to other men who will be able to share it with others. So Shadrach benefited. He wanted others to be the benefit. Now, what God has done is to develop these Bible institutes in Chiwoko, in Arua, in the northwest of Uganda, and across in Juba, in South Sudan, through uh, David Fugoyo and uh, our partnership with the African uh, Renewal University. And Christianity Explored is right at the core, not only of the evangelistic models, but also of the expository Bible teaching. Uh, pastors and women's workers and all kinds of gospel workers learning how to handle the Bible, getting the bug for seeing the Lord Jesus walk off the pages of the gospel. And uh, there are about, so far, about 550 people who've been through these Bible institutes who would otherwise have no, any, no, no supportive training in any sense for the ministry. And it's just been thrilling to see this work and uh, Christianity explored right in the heart of that. So that's a little bit different from our primary aim, but it's an enormous blessing as we think of Rico's talk tonight, that seed going forth and now being used not only primarily in evangelism and discipleship, but also in encouraging and training people to be serious about the Word of God. Thank you. And I think we have a clip of Shadrach, do we not? Shadrach, you'll see him. Uh, who, who has recorded this to talk to us this evening. Greetings to uh, our friends. Love, live, tell the gospel. 
I'm Shadrach Lukwago, uh, working with Christian Explored East Africa now for about 17 years. Christian Explored uh, uh, was introduced in Uganda by a couple, Jim and Margaret, who brought one copy to Chiwoko and then introduced this, brought this one copy into our Bible study class. We went through it and we saw the need and how the material was very good for us and for our people. And we, uh, that's how it started. Then we asked for more copies and we started using the CE material from there. When we got introduced to, uh, to us, Christian Explorer, when we went through it, we realized that much as we would use it as a, an evangelistic material and discipleship material, we saw that it was important again to use it for training leaders. And since then, for about now 16 years, we are using it. It's one of our core courses we take on on our Chiwoko Bible Institute because of the way it was designed. The way the Gospel of Mark was arranged, the way the passages are dealt with, we, this is a, it, it's a very, very good way to introduce the leaders to it so that they can adapt it as a way they can, a style, a style of studying the other passages. We started with a school in Chiwoko, Chiwoko Bible Institute, and we are getting pastors from all over, and we ended up getting pastors from northern Uganda, up north, about four kilometer, 400 kilometers away, and we realized that it was a very big distance, there was a very big need, and as a result of that, we introduced Arua Bible Institute. Mm -hmm. And now we are running two Bible Institutes, the Achiwoko Bible Institute in central Uganda, and Arua Bible Institute in Arua. We are working hard, hard using CE as a model. So as we continue to open Bible training centers, this is giving opportunities to leaders who are doing ministry but have not got any formal training to actually get trained on how they can handle the scriptures in a very better way. Thanks, guys. It, um, I mean, it's just so exciting to hear about work that has been going on for years and years and building and growing. So thank you for that. Um, so those of you who are regulars to Love Live Tell will know that there is a person missing uh, from the panel this evening, and that, of course, is Stephen James, who heads up our prisons work. Um, he does have a good excuse, to be fair. He is currently in Paraguay, uh, training leaders to take Christianity Explored into prisons across the country. Um, the prisons Christianity Explored is called The Prisoner's Journey. And before, uh, actually while he was there, I think he recorded, he has recorded a message for us from Paraguay. And we're gonna watch that in a second. We've also got a message from um, uh, a lady called Ray Wood, who works for Prison Fellowship International. And PFI is the organization that we've partnered with to take the prison's work across the world. So we're gonna hear from Stephen and then we're going to hear from Ray. Good evening to you all at All Souls this evening. I'm Stephen James. I'm the uh, Christianity Explored Prisons Ministry Director and I'm also the lead trainer for Prison Fellowship International for the Prisoner's Journey. You're going to hear from Ray Wood who is the uh, Vice President of Global Impact for Prison Fellowship International. She's going to talk a little bit about our partnership with them. You have Ian with you this evening, and he's going to talk about what's been happening in 2022 with the prisoners, especially uh, from Nairobi, where we did the program coordinator training. We had an amazing time there. Sorry I'm not with you. Uh, hopefully I'll be um, in a prison in Asuncion training uh, prisoners to be course leaders whilst you're watching this video and you're enjoying the evening. Thank you very much for your support with the prison ministries and uh, yeah, I, I'm amazed by how the Lord has, has used uh, Christianity Explored and the prison edition which we developed in 2010 in Cardiff Prison. So have a great evening and I'll see you all soon. Greetings from Ashburn, Virginia in the United States. My name is Ray Wood. I'm the Vice President of Global Impact here at Prison Fellowship International, which means I have the lovely privilege of leading the PFI's field-facing initiatives in nearly 120 countries. Our God-sized vision here at PFI is to break the cycle of crime and restore lives worldwide through Jesus's love. 
And we aim to achieve this vision by transforming the lives of prisoners and their families through a global network of ministry partners like Christianity Explored Ministries. While multiple factors contribute towards breaking cycles of crime, two primary drivers that are most relevant within PFI's prison-centered context are one, prisoners undergo an identity transformation through encounters with Jesus, and two, prisoners develop those healthy social relationships that provide support and belonging as they return to their families and communities. Our in-prison programs are designed to create opportunity for meaningful engagement with Jesus, many times through scripture engagement. And the best example we have is the Prisoner's Journey program, which is rooted in the Christianity Explored curriculum. And this is where I must give a special thank you to all of Christianity Explored Ministries, one of our very first strategic partners dating back to 2013. And I dare say the reason we've been able to have so much influence in prisons around the world. Now, TPJ is our flagship evangelism program. It launched in 2014. And since then, I've had the personal pleasure of watching this program grow from two countries with an annual graduation rate of 3,000 prisoners to 36 countries with an annual graduation rate of 175,000 prisoners. Cumulatively, to date, over 600,000 prisoners have graduated from this course that's offered in 26 languages and dialects, but we aren't stopping here. Over the next five years, this program will scale to nearly 50 countries with an annual graduation rate of 300,000 participants. Now, we hypothesize that if 20% of the global prison population, which is roughly two to three million prisoners, if they experience that life-changing transformation that's then followed by changed behavior, the culture inside prisons will tip. And the ripple effect of this tipping will be immense. Reduced institutional costs, reduced recidivism, more offenders returning to the community as contributing members, and our ultimate hope is the expansion of the gospel. And so with that, I say thank you once again for your support and enabling us to globally distribute Christianity Explored, which is bringing hope and light to the world's darkest places, prisons. Ian, I'll come back to you. Um, it is amazing to see what is happening in prisons. It really is. Um, Stephen mentioned an event in Nairobi. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yes, uh, Stephen, uh, Luan, uh, and myself went there in, uh, in September. It's quite odd. Stephen's gone to Paraguay, Luan's gone to Canada, and I'm the, <laughs> I'm the one left here on the stage. But uh, it, was, um, it was an amazing time. The Every year, Prison Fellowship have an event where the, the new countries starting up come to, to get trained, and Steve does the training. Because of COVID, there was a bit of a backlog this year, so... Um, so it's quite a big event, and they combined it with other PFI events. So there were probably about 100 of us from about 30 countries in total in the hotel. And, I mean, that in itself was a, a real privilege just to, uh, to, to, to be there. The, the reason why uh, Luanne and I went was because, we, firstly, we wanted to uh, offer the possibility of the Discipleship Explored Prison Edition, to act as a follow-on to TPJ. And secondly, we knew of a lot of countries who were starting to want to use Christianity Explored in, in churches um, on, the, on the back of what they, they'd seen with the prisons. So we went to sort of explore that possibility. And uh, we knew the week was going well <laughs> because we were, we were receiving really good, uh, good reception. On Friday, we had a seminar. And I think there were about 15 countries represented there, and we were just blown away by the demand that there was for our material. So it was really exciting to see that. I also had Luanne at my shoulder, sort of, you could feel her panicking almost, because, you know, you're talking countries from Paraguay to Guinea-Conakry to Namibia, and Luanne's thinking, how on earth are we going to actually supply materials to all these, uh, all these places? So 
combination of excitement and trepidation, really, as to how we could do that. But really, it's just a, an incredibly wonderful problem to have. Uh, and now we have the task of actually satisfying the, the demand that really appears to be there. So, <laughs> so that's go. 2023 then? <laughs> uh, and, and beyond, yeah, I suspect, yeah. yeah. So. And, and one of those countries was Uganda, and yeah. uh, you went to check up on their progress after. Yeah, Tell us about we, that. we met Robert in, uh, or Luan and I met Robert in September, and uh, Steve and Craig had gone out to do the, the training in August. And uh, he's a good guy, Robert. It's a very interesting uh, person. And when we were out in, uh, in, in Uganda last week, uh, he came up to the conference that we were at, and so we just had a chance. He'd only, literally, they launched this in sort of September, October time, so he's been running the program for two, three months, and uh, he gave us two minutes of, of what's going on. So if we can play that now, Daisy, that'd be good. Uh, I'm Wanambwa Robert Kamotson. I'm the Executive Director of Prison Fellowship Uganda. It's a pleasure and I am delighted to be here with you. Uh, wow, I think Prison Fellowship Uganda, I should say we, we, we are living in one of the exciting moments ever since we started doing prison ministry. We're so grateful to a program that was uh, launched called the Prisoner's Journey Program. And we're glad to have had Stephen James coming over to Uganda to train our volunteers. And I should say we have had a huge impact, especially in the, in the prisons. Uh, recently, we just uh, graduated about 907 wow. inmates wow. in one prison, that mm -hmm. is Chital Yamin Max. And the amazing thing of it all is that we had 374 men saying that we have now understood this Jesus. We have known why he came and what it means to follow him. Mm -hmm. So we are excited at what God is doing in the Ugandan prisons. Mm -hmm. What I like about the material particularly is the simplicity in the presentation of the total gospel as handed down by our Lord Jesus Christ. I think there is no better way that you can have the gospel, this good news, elaborately, clearly, and explicitly brought forward in a simple language that any, any lay person is able to understand. That cannot uh, hesitate to thank whoever out there that is putting a contribution, giving, whatever it is, to see that this materials comes down to us. We're very excited. May the Lord God Almighty bless you. We foresee many, many households, many churches, many ministries picking interest in this material. And to us, once the word of God is, comes down to the least of the people in our society, so we're excited about the future of this material. We see this material almost in every household. And actually, I should say, every household globally needs this material <laughs> because it transforms life from within out. Well, thank you for giving us that um, brilliant overview about all the hard work you've been doing with partner organizations around the world. I know we've barely scratched the surface and there is so much more that you could talk about. Um, we're going to finish this section by thinking about what is probably our most borderless project, if you like, and that's the work that we do online, which I think is just a really, um, it's going to become even more important going forward. Um, and we've got Katie Lee here with us tonight. Thank you so much for coming. Um, Katie, tell us about you and tell us um, how you came to be working with Christianity Explored. Sure. Um, just thank you for having me. And so I came to work for C Ministries back in 2014 after I decided to leave behind my banking career. And Ian was brave enough to take me on and uh, ever since just can't quite get rid of me. And <laughs> so I'm just so happy to be a partner with Ministries. Um, and it was when I decided to go back to China back in 2016, I was in primary a tent maker in China, um, primarily serving um, a local house church, and as um, some of us um, probably have some understanding of uh, how the church uh, network um, sort of manifests itself in China, is with the house church, it's not very organized, it's very underground, um, and that's the time why I introduced C materials to my local church, and I just start to see this beautiful fruit um, um, spreading within the church network, within the house church network. 
Um, uh, particularly, I remember when I was leading C materials and just seeing uh, those aunties and uncles in their 60s, 70s, and they've been going to church for years, but when they went through the course and they had this penny dropped moment when they realized they have been given grace and they have a salvation in Jesus, it was just so precious. And that got me really passionate about thinking about how can we um, make this material more available to the Chinese network. And, um, and I, w I was able to uh, connect C Ministries with um, a sort of radio uh, company. It's called Far East Broadcasting Company. Uh, their headquarters is based in Hong Kong. But for decades, they've been broadcasting gospel message into mainland uh, coverage. And, and they were able to partner with us to adapt our C course into Chinese Mandarin. And so that has been really helped uh, getting more and more Chinese churches to adopt the CE course. Um, so currently, I'm primarily serving C ministry as a volunteer. So I hope there are more people who will be joining me, my team like, in terms <laughs> of helping the ministry because I really believe in, um, I think all the other um, ambassadors have sh shared is the beauty of our CE course being so cl crystal clear about what the foundation of Christian faith is about. And it can be developed into even a discipleship materials, which is how we used it in the Chinese network. Um, so yeah, that's really my history with the CE ministry. Well, thank you for all that you do with Christianity Explored. Now, you were recently at a conference in Rotterdam with our international operations manager, Luan Enns, weren't you? Why don't you tell us all about that? Right, so it was, because my passion is about digital evangelism. It's about reaching the people who are online, uh, spiritual seekers. And so this conference organized by Jesus.net is a, a ministry that is based in the Netherlands. They are a global network of all different ministries around the world who are passionate about uh, sharing Jesus with online seekers. So on this conference, we were able to see, you know, just a beautiful presentation of um, different culture, different languages, sharing the common mission of how can we let more people who are online uh, to come across the gospel message. Um, so actually, I, th I believe we have a video uh, is from a couple of our international partners who have been working with the C ministries, utilizing the C course materials, uh, but also apply that on their online infrastructure. And I believe the word I'm thinking is to make the CE material more relatable for the <laughs> online audience. Um, so yeah, let, let's uh, take, a look, take a look at the video. Thanks. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mark. I lead internet evangelism here at the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Just wanted to express my gratitude for working with Christianity Explored for the past few years and share just a, a brief update on what happened in 2022. Uh, we are so grateful to work with CE. Uh, several years ago, we partnered together to put the content of Christianity Explored into an online environment, and our, our trained uh, volunteers and coaches mentor people through the course online, and thousands go through the course every year, including 2022. Over 5,500 individual people enrolled in Christianity Explored online in English and Spanish, 80% of those were from outside of the United States, various countries that included South Africa, India, uh, Canada, Australia, Philippines, and more. The good news is our goal, all of us together collectively, are trying to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with people. And 167 people professed a new faith in Jesus through Christianity Explored Online. Uh, so grateful for that. 643 additional express a renewed commitment or a return to Christ after some time of wandering in their life. So that's the desire that we all have together and by God's grace, it happened this year. I just wanted to share just a, a few words to you from people who have been ministered by CE online through both the content that CE offers and the coaches that we have who are ministering to them. Here's Robert, who after 35 years of wandering from the Lord, finally came back to him as he went through CE. He said, I feel like I'm on my way down the right path of life now. I have so much to learn, but the course I had with you got me started back. Now I can't get enough. Or Jennifer, 
She said, my answers to the first question of this section in the course show just how wrong I was about my reasons for gaining eternal life, as she looks back at where she started in the course. Now she's saying, that precious gift can only be given to me by God in his infinite love and mercy. I can't tell you how much joy and comfort I am getting from this program and our conversation. I'm so grateful to God that God brought me to this. And the last uh, word I'd like to share from you was Ahmed. Ahmed was in Afghanistan. As he turned to Christ through this course, he shared with us that uh, the Taliban kept coming and searching his apartment. He would log out of the course, try to delete it from his phone, uh, fearful that they would find him and persecute him. Thankfully, by God's grace, they did not. But Ahmed came to faith in Jesus, and he said, Thank you, God, for loving me, sending your son to die on the cross for my sins. I give Jesus control of my life. Help me to be the person that you want me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, uh, grateful for the partnership with Christianity Explored to allow God to have these opportunities to use this course and this content and our coaches uh, to transform the lives <clears throat> excuse me, of Jennifer and, and Ahmed and hundreds and thousands of others. So um, God bless you. Hope, hope you have a wonderful 2023, and we're looking forward to see what God does this year. Hello, my name is Adriana Bravo. And my name is Juan Bravo. We serve with Conectar Global based in Medellin, Colombia, reaching out to the Spanish-speaking world. When my husband and I ran into the Discipleship Explore material during the pandemic, a question resonated with us. How do we make disciples? How can we be bold and yet genuinely joyful, respectful, loving, and trustworthy so as to make new followers of Christ and rekindle the love in the more seasoned ones. After our own journey through the letter to the Philippians, we at Conectar Global embarked on the project of teaching discipleship explored throughout the Spanish-speaking world. We launched El Corazón del Discipulado, in English, the heart of discipleship at our most recent summit that took place in October of 2022. Currently, 138 students from Colombia, from Venezuela, Honduras, Mexico, the US, Argentina, Spain, and even Turkey have completed the online training with the help of a mentor. I would like to share with you the testimony of Pastor Arelis in, uh, from Cartagena, Colombia. She already took the online course and she says the following, El Corazón del Discipulado, the heart of discipleship, brought in me a deep desire to keep studying and learning. I found the material to be simple, but very profound. Paul discovered that nothing compares to the love of Christ. It led me to realize that other things in life were robbing me of my attention. Having a mentor teacher was a real blessing as I was challenged to look deep inside of me and make the necessary changes. I was eager to do the course from start to finish. Thank you, Christianity Explored, for partnering with Connectar Global and providing an excellent material on discipleship. God bless. God bless. Thank you. So as you see, we already have English, Spanish uh, as online course uh, with the CE course as a core. And we have uh, several other language uh, in the pipeline. And my personal wish is to see Chinese um, being made into the online course. So if you are watching here, uh, if you're interested, um, please come and chat with me. Uh, we would love to get Chinese material online. Well, these are the guys who can make that happen. So um, thank you so much. Thank you, Katie, for coming along. Digital evangelism is only going to grow in importance in the coming years. So thank you for building us a really solid foundation. That is much appreciated. Um, that brings us to the end of our international update. Thank you so much, guys. Um, Ian, finish up for us. What really stands out to you from the, the work that's been going on? Yeah, I mean, the thing is our ministry, the credibility of our ministry rests on being a UK ministry. Um, 
we were founded in this church and we're thrilled to be associated with, uh, with All Souls. Um, but actually, what goes on in this country is a mere pinprick as to, to, to what's going on overall. And you know, I don't know how you measure this, but I think when the annals of history are written, the most significant things that will have come out of our ministry will be happening or will have happened thousands of miles away in a way we never ever dreamt was, was going to happen. So that is just an amazing thought, really. That So our credibility comes from here, but our significance is now truly global. It's an amazing thought. Thank you so much. It, it is a, it's a testimony, isn't it, to God's faithfulness and yeah. his unfailing compassion on the lost. Um, so thank you so much for bringing all those stories. Um, guys, we're coming to the end of uh, our time, but why don't we stand and why don't we um, remind ourselves about God's faithfulness? Thank you.
Thank you. Do take a seat. So just before we uh, close tonight, I just do need to say some thank yous, some important thank yous. And the first one is to All Souls for letting us use the building tonight. We are so grateful. I don't know if they'll let us carry on using the building now we've stolen Rico, but we, we are so grateful for that. And also for all the All Souls staff who has helped us all day um, in the background to, to get everything ready. Um, I would like to say a quick thank you to the Christianity Explored staff, not the ones on the stage, but the ones making the food and directing everyone and just making sure everything happens. So thank you to you guys. Um, and finally, but definitely not least, to Mihail and Carissa um, for leading us in our music. Um, thank you. And finally, of course, a thank you to you. Um, thank you for your support and prayer. It is so important to us, uh, particularly as we go into this season um, on working on new resources. Um, we just ask that you would pray for us going forward as we manage uh, the project that we have ahead of us. Christianity, the new Christianity Explored and the new youth resource are just the first phase of a bigger project. Um, we want to do more work on more of the resources. And as Dave was saying, we want to launch a new website that will be coming later this year so that we can uh, deliver the product, products to our course leaders more effectively. Um, and combined, it is the biggest project that Christianity Explored has ever undertaken. But we are convinced that it is needed. It's needed to continue to serve you well and it is needed to reach new audiences, and particularly younger audiences, and we know that that is a huge need. Um, a few of you have said, is that not a stretch financially? And the answer to that is yes. Um, we've calculated that we will need to raise 1.5 million over the next three years to get this done. Um, we don't take that lightly. Um, we're encouraged by what John Lennox uh, famously said, trust God and use reason. Don't use God and trust reason. So that's what we're trying to do. We are going to step forward in faith, but we are going to do the really hard thinking about how we continue to reach new audiences with this saving message of Christ. If you have any questions about any of the things that you've heard this evening, I would love to talk to you. Um, if you have questions about the resources, um, if you have questions about the international work, I know Ian would love to talk to you. If you have questions about how you can help us reach that 1.5 million target, I would love to talk to you. Um, please do grab me after, we, we're about to finish, please do grab me afterwards. Um, if I'm not around or I'm chatting to someone else, there is a special email address where you can reach me. Talk to Kay at christianityexplored.org. I really like to talk to Christianity Explored users. So do use that um, and let's fix up a time. I would really, really love to talk to you. So thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for seeing the value in what we do. And thank you particularly for inspiring us to make Christianity Explored the very best that it can be. And thank you for coming tonight. Um, Rico, do you want to come up and pray for us as we finish? Uh, normally, Charlie Scream, uh, who is the director here, would be uh, doing this final prayer. But as you can imagine, he's been at Sinner today and working all week. He's with his family now. But let's pray for him as he leads all souls in these troubled times. And let's pray for the glory of Christ. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you very much for Charlie. Uh, we thank you for the remarkable gifts he has. Lord, we pray for resilience for him and great wisdom. We pray for Claire. We pray for the family. Please be with them as they lead all souls at this time. And Father, above all, we tell you that we pray for the glory of Jesus. We pray that your son would be raised up and greatly honoured. We pray that in all this we would communicate the fact that he is the good shepherd, that he is utterly trustworthy, that he has forgiven us, and that we must live for his glory. And we pray that you would draw many to your son through this work. We're depraved men and women. We can't bear the fact that in our hearts uh, so often we grieve your Holy Spirit. But because of the miracle you have done, what we long for most, and we're amazed at this, but it is the truth, is Jesus to be glorified. And therefore, as we go now and as we go into the year ahead, we ask for the honour and glory of Jesus. Please help us 
to do all we can in these short lives for his glory. Amen. Joy is too.